welcome to the channel everyone um just let me know anyone who comes on if you can hear me or not um I'll just wait for a couple to pop on uh today we are just getting my kit ready actually i say today i just nipped out into the garden for a little bit of time just to uh, sort a bit of kit out because i'm going on a match tomorrow and i've just got a little break in my day job and i'm going to quickly do some bait prep for tomorrow's match which is at barbie banks so just let me know if you can hear me i see that one of you's joining me now just let me know if you can hear me because i've got a mic on rather than um using the, the phone mic so let just let me know pop it in the comments that'd be great and um yeah just let me know you can hear me nice one right so now a few of you are starting to join yeah i thought i'm doing loads of pellet fishing at the moment and i thought we could just do nice little prep video um for the sort of pellet fishing that i've been doing recently at barbie banks um four seconds in a row um at this venue all on pellets i've had a few fish on pace but that's sort of come to an end now and we're sort of just getting to grips with the pellet fishing there really and there's a few little things that i've been doing um nothing revolutionary i might add but certain tips i think make a big difference with pellet fishing and before we go any further i've got to say a massive thank you to everyone who's been watching recently really good viewing numbers at the moment great great feedback as well it's really nice to get some feedback and this is the first live that i've actually done on the channel in this sort of modern era of my channel sort of thing and I just, it's just more of a trial really because we want to do more of it on the new fish channel so if you haven't um already subscribed to the new fish channel some great content on there something a bit different as well as in uh we like went to hulk and hunt factory last week uh stuff like that some stuff that's not just necessarily just fishing method feeder for carp or whatever so um thanks everyone and uh let's get on to the crux of the matter so we're doing loads of pellet fishing at the moment and most of my fishing is hard pellet fishing uh two sizes really it's all pole fishing where i've been going so eight mils don't really come into it so the pellets that i've been using are uh, I've got an association with uh, Sonu, so it become no surprise that we've been using the old Fin Perfects. Um, but I take four mil and six mil with me, and what I like to do, I like to, I don't like using them straight out of the bag. Don't get me wrong, you catch loads of fish just using them straight out of the bag, no problem at all. Um, but I like to just tweak them a little bit. The problem is with using them straight out of the bag is often when you're feeding them. Say if you're feeding, put ten in a little pole pot and you whip over the far, far bank or you fill your catapult up and you fire some in if you just chuck some in the edge you'll see oftentimes you get them like floating and some of them will get stuck in the surface tension and all that I don't really want that i want them to all fall at a uniform rate so what i've got to do because i don't want to soak them to help get them through that surface tension i want to make sure that they all get through thanks to using oils so i use a bit of fish oil that's just a bit of absolute but i also use salmon oil a lot um i buy it from british aqua feeds i think it is the company i get it from uh, i also get their liver liquid which is really good for the old chevins when i go chevin fishing in the winter but to be honest fish oils any of them are pretty good um just make sure you get a good one that's like i said that's absolute one i have used like sunflower oil and stuff in the past and caught plenty of fish with that olive oil i don't think it really matters it's getting it's getting the uh it's getting the oil in um that i think is really important There's a couple of chats coming in hang on nice to see you doing a live chat nice one um right if you have got any questions please fire them in because uh, i'll be here for sort of the next 20 minutes or so yeah so get yourself some fish oil that is the most important thing and like i say it can be a olive oil or a veg oil but fish oil makes sense and what i do i like to do it in, in advance hence why i'm doing it now for tomorrow but what i do obviously i have my bags of pellets but if you buy them by the sack or you're buying from the fishery do it in advance so if you're going say you go into shearsby valley for example where i go i know that i'm going to be needing fishery pellets there so what i like to do i'll go on a match and i'll buy several bags um yeah several bags at a time and then it allows me to prep them at home doing this method whereas if i turn up on the morning of the match i can't really do that um because it takes a while for the oil to get in the pellets so what i like to do is do this in advance so what i have and anyone who's seen me on matches recently has commented oh you're taking loads of bait with you and what i have is these two buckets with me just they're just like ones with sealed up lids i think specimen anglers use it for like spod mixes and stuff really important what i have is like a rolling 
stocker pellets, if you like. You can see there. There's, there's some fishery ones in there and all sorts of pellets in there. You can see. And they have that with four mils and six mils. I've even got eight mils in the same, but they're in the shed because I don't need them. And you see I've got the four mils in there as well. And what I have is a, is a, um, like a rolling stock. Some, some matches, like last week, for example, I come second with 180 pounds. I've had six pints of four mils. That gets eight pints in there. So I've only got a few left. Um, but I've got them with me. Sometimes you only need a pint. Sometimes you need two pints. Sometimes you need six or seven pints. So I like on fisheries that don't have a limit or anything, I like to just carry them with me and I can just scoop out what I need. But more importantly, it gives me the place to prep them. So I'm gonna do that now. So we'll open this bag of fours. Like I say, what I do, I have a bit of like a rolling stock. Um, so like my fours are running a bit low, so I'm just gonna top them up, get them in there. And I think what's important to show you is the different color. So we've got the fresh pellets and then we've got the oily numbers there. Maybe you can see that bit difficult so them ones in my right hand uh, the standard ones straight out of the packet and then they're the ones that have been oiled and all it's a case of is getting your pellets in that bucket getting some of the oil drizzle it in there you don't need loads don't go mad just a nice little drizzle pop the lid back on apologies for the noise and do that and then make sure they're all covered, so we just need to put a little bit more in there. That's my last bit of that bottle of oil. Like, this is why you need to do it the day before, even a, you know, a little bit of time before, because it takes a little while for that oil to soak in. It does soak in faster with scratting pellets rather than copping pellets as well. Um, that's one big thing that I've found. It takes a lot longer with coppins. Scratting's a much more porous pellet. And that's it. Simple as that. So all them pellets have got a lovely glaze on them now. Probably can't see it very well, but they've got a lovely sheen to them. And that'll, by tomorrow when I go fishing, that'll have all soaked in there and the pellets go like a different colour. They'll all sink at the uniform rate and that's why I do it. Gives them a boost of fishy smell as well, which can't be a bad thing. And then I've got the sixes as well. Perfect. So that's it. That is my prep. And like I said, they're a little bit greasy, so take a towel with you when you're doing this uh, fishing. But there you go. I have my rolling tubs. And every few days, I'll give them a shake about. Maybe if they're looking a little bit dry, I'll dri drizzle a bit more oil in. And they're good to go. So that's a nice little tip if you uh, are hard pellet fishing. I know a lot of people do put oils and stuff on their pellets. Um, and it's just something that I've got loads of confidence in. I've done it for a long time. And I, I just think your peg gets better and better and better. And I'm sure it's constantly um, pulling fish in the oils and stuff and when they're eating them and that. And it just makes sure that they probably stay intact a little bit longer on the bottom as well because the oil's preventing the water from getting into the pellets. So big, big edge that is for me. Uh, like I say, people are, loads of people are doing it. It's nothing new, but that's just how I do it. And like I say, get yourself one of these buckets and you can top it up as you go and now, like I say I have that running stock and I just keep it keep that fresh oil going through so let me just double check if we've got any comments on the screen hang on just trying to work out the what's going on with this because this is my first live uh, what size pellets would you start a session with um good question that Stephen basically I like to the barbie is the example where I'm fishing at the minute a lot of the carp are sort of two to Two to six pound is the average, but certainly two to four pound is like the fish that you catch in. I like to start with fours at the moment um, and gather some fish and then work it out from there. But if I'm getting a lot of liners or whatever, I won't hesitate to um, have, start feeding six mils. And last week I started feeding six mils and it was a game changer. Got the fish on the bottom, less bait on the bottom, just got the cleaner bites. So have both and, and just work out. Have you found a good way to dry the pellets after soaking in liquids? Oh, I'm going to get onto that in a minute. Um, what type of oil do I use? Like I say, that, that's the absolute fish oil, but I also use salmon oil from British Aquafeeds. I get through quite a lot of it. Um, so I actually quite like the bulk sort of uh, jugs, if you like, of the British Aquafeed stuff. I just think it's a bit um, more, you know, just get more from my money sort of thing. But yeah, any fish oil. You just want salmon oil, fish oil, because um, it has that oily smell. But like I said, uh, earlier 
I even use I've even used olive oil and sunflower oil in the past. Um, it's good stuff in it. We eat it, so why not? Um, someone asked about adding liquids to your pellets and having them um, like dry out, and I think that's something that I've kind of sussed out actually uh, just recently. And that was my next tip about pellet colour. Now I am a big, big, big advocate of having a little selection of different coloured hook baits. You see there I've got red ones, I've got just normal Coppins ones, I've got them pasty looking ones. I know a few people like Jamie Hughes and that go on about them and they're very, very good. I've even got some eight mils in there. Um, now <laughs> it's funny because Mick, my boss Mick Viles, always jokes at me when I we're out filming and I'll say, I'll put a red one on and start catching. He's like, Joe, you're talking nonsense. How can it make any difference? You're feeding brown pellets. But I always flip that on its head when I'm speaking to him because I'm like, but you put a red maggot on or a fluoro maggot when you feed a fish in or you tip a worm with a red maggot to give it a bit of flash. So why is it any different with pellets? And I just think it makes sense, even if it just catches their eye, to have something different or certainly try something different. I'm not saying that a different colour pellet is going to get you more bites, but I've just found this, this year I've done so much hard pellet fishing and the number of times them two, a red one or that really light pale one gets you bites is unbelievable and I'm just I'm convinced it just catches their eye, it either casts a different silhouette, it just something about it catches their eye. Now the red ones you can use robin red pellets um, there's like bloodworm pellets that Sonu do, there's several different red pellets available. Um, the only thing I've noticed is that they've gone quite um, like a dark colour, like a really deep red, which I don't like. I like that, I like that really vibrant red. Put that up to the camera so you can see, I like that really vibrant red. I just think it's a confidence thing, isn't it, at the end of the day. Um, so I just use like a red dye, um, something like the haze, like the bloodworm haze. Uh, Fuka do a really good red dye as well. I'd give a shout out to Fuka, even though I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Uh, their red dye is excellent. I have tried that, but this one's just as good, the haze. Now, the problem is when you do your own um, red pellets, as in add liquids to your own pellets, once the flavour's gone in and the soap's gone in, you'll get that lovely vibrant red colour or yellow, whatever you choose. But the problem is the pellets always have like a tacky feel to them. Uh, so they're never the water gets to them dead quick because they're slightly tacky, they've not had a chance to dry, and no matter how long you leave them, you'll never get over that, you, it just, they'll always be tacky. And as you can see, I keep them in like Himalayan salt, and that does two things, obviously it helps dry them out, you see that, the whole Himalayan salt, it, it helps dry them out, and obviously gives them a bit of a salty crust, which the fish like, I like salt for me um, fishing, no secret to that, you see that? But that's not the answer. The answer is get a baking tray, preferably when the missus is out, I'll give you that tip. Get a baking tray, stick your oven on, put some baking paper on there so that um, you're not clarting up your trays or anything. Once you've soaked, soaked your pellets and let the uh, colour go in, pop them on a baking tray on an even level, so just a nice thin uh, layer of pellets, no like heaping up on each other. Stick them in the oven, it doesn't take long, like five minutes. Keep checking them and you'll notice, because if you leave them too long, they'll burn. You don't want them to burn. You just want them to take the um, tackiness off and you'll get to a point where they're perfect hard pellets um, and they've, they've lost that tackiness and that is the best way i found. You see there, they're absolutely beautiful hard pellets they are. No tackiness to them whatsoever because they've been cooked. And I don't know if that's how the bait companies do them, I'm not sure. But it's how I've been doing them recently and I love them. Uh, I, I do fours, sixes, eights. And like I say, just a drizzle of red dye on there is brilliant. So I think that's a really, really big edge me. Having some different options with your pe uh, hook pellets when it comes to hard pellet fishing, I think it's a massive edge. Um, I can't stress enough how many fish I have caught, particularly on the red ones and then pasty white ones. I've caught so many fish on them this summer. Uh, it's been really good. So there you go. So get yourself some red dye, something like the haze. Drizzle it on the pellets. Get these little tubs as well. <laughs> you get them off Amazon for a couple of quid. They're really cheap and it allows you to just do a few. Um, a few little pots of pellets and stuff. Um, soak them in them. Drizzle the haze on there. Shake them around. Leave them to soak in. Then get them on that little that baking tray with a, the with a, uh, baking paper on there. Cook them for a few minutes until they're like 
taken that sticky edge off them and that's how you get um, hard pellets to take on the colour without because uh, they're always wet aren't they and they'll end up breaking apart so let's just double check the things uh, Stephen wants to know do I prefer pellets from any different company uh, a lot of the pellets are very similar aren't they uh, a lot of the time you obviously need to use pellets fishery pellets so go with that um, but if I can, I'll use the so new ones. Um, I even buy bulk bags of pellets as well from whoever, pellet guys, anyone like that. Anyone who does bulk, bulk buy pellets can work out a nice price as well. So something to bear in mind. But yeah, coppins, I like coppins for six mils and I like screttings for four mils, just personal preference. Uh, right, where else are we? We've got that one, done that one. Alexander wants to know, sorry it's not about pellets, but started using Zip. What's your go-to for stocky carp and bream? Uh, probably the white. The white one's a really good all-rounder. Um, it works really well. So, yeah, white, or even the, the next one down, the pink, the orangey pink one, uh, that would work as well. And that leads, leads me on to my final pellet tip of the day. So if you've got any questions, get them in the comments. Um, and how's the life? footage i've never like really done one of these before so uh i thought it'd be a nice little gap filler between proper videos as well i thought you know if i'm out with anyone or uh, i feel like something's important like today like i said i'm just doing my pellet prep for tomorrow's match and i thought this is perfect little subject because hard pellet fishing is dead easy but there is still little tweaks you can do like say with the oiled up pellets and having your few different options when it comes to hook baits you're covered uh, and that brings me on to my final point and that is using really big, um, I've been, obviously I've, I've had a really good summer on the pace. Everyone knows I'm a pace dead. Uh, I used loads of pace throughout the summer and it's been deadly this year. I've got so many fish down the edge on it. However, the last time I fished it was at Shears, but I haven't actually released a live match yet, but I was foul looking a lot of fish. I was having a few issues with foul look fish, missed bites. And when paste is on and it's right, you don't get that, you just get them wallop unders, hook them in the mouth. Whereas as soon as you start foul looking them and stuff, it tells me that it's not quite right. And the I don't know if you remember, the temperatures really dipped in August. We had a lot, just cold nights and all sorts, and it just killed it. However, the fish were still feeding and coming in. They just weren't as aggressive. So I was looking for other options, and it was Adam Richards, actually. Uh, shout out to Adam, who told me about using big, bloaty expanders, double expanders. Um, on the edge and it's some uh, down the edge and it's something that i used to do double four mils was a really good up bait on the mud line back in the day when i used to fish at the oaks and i'm sure it's because it's still soft um, and bloaty and, and nice and easy for the fish to pick up but it's a big hook bait rather than putting say a hard pellet on which is out of place when you're feeding soft baits um so it made a lot of sense to me what he was saying and i've been playing with it all summer the pellets that is and it, it's been working a treat i use a size 12 hook so a nice big hook and I'll thread one on, so I'll put it round the bend of the hook, pull it up the line, up the hook length, and then put the other one on uh, as normal, and then slide that one down and sit it on, and you get this lovely big double six mil uh, expander um, hook bait, and it worked a treat. I was, like I said, I was second last week, and I caught 40 odd pound down the edge in the last 20 odd minutes, all on double six mil expander. And the little pots are back, and just as with my hard pellets, I like to give myself two options. Um, so I've got the six mil, they're the pro expanders, I like to do them in these little pots. Um, I just put a few in the bottom and then uh, just fill it with water and then I do some with, again, the trusty red dye in there and they'll be lovely and red tomorrow, ready for the match. I'll put these in the fridge. I always do my pro expanders in these little pots um, and put them in the fridge overnight. I think it's so important. Uh, it's a, a cool pellet, really, as soon as they get warm they start breaking up too easy. You don't want that, you want them cold. I'll even put them in like a little cool bag when I'm on the, on the match or like a little cool pack underneath them. It's something I've done lots of. Cold pellets are the best. And yeah, the red one last week, I was catching on this, no problem. But then when I put the red ones on, just as like I've been talking about with my hard pellets, the bites, the bites on it, are just like pace bites, you get proper wallops. I use the 4x14 Fury, which has got a two and a half mil tip, which traditionally is probably a bit fat for... Um, expander pellet fishing but when you've got two big bloaty six mils on that are heavy as well because of the pro expanders the bites it's like you've got a big almost like paste on but not and i was just sitting there feeding me a little trap 
uh, micros, bit of ground bait, sit in there and it just sit there and just go whack and you've got one. So never miss the bite, which tells me it's the right bait. Uh, and the red one, fishing is about confidence and I'm really confident in red baits. I've caught on red pace this year, I've caught on red pellets, I've caught on now I'm on red expanders. I can't, I can't, absolutely love it. So let's have a little look at some chats. One day I'll have this all sorted and we'll have like proper cameras and stuff, but we're doing it on my phone for that for now. Uh, oh, Alexander, blue and green, yeah, it's a bit, bit heavy for, um, blue and green zip that is, it's a bit heavy for bream really. The white one is a good all rounder for like bream and stockies and stuff. Uh, right, where else? How do you find expanders for staying on the hook? A little bit like what I've just said, you've got to keep them cool. So when you've pumped them or prepared them like I have, just popped them in water because they're the, uh, the pros, get them in a fridge. Uh, allow them to cool down. Keep them cool on the bank is my number one thing. Don't let the water that they're in get warm. I'll often change the water when I'm on the bank as well. Um, Finn, Andy Finley, when I used to go out with him, used to keep his in a flask full of ice um, to keep them. Because as soon as they get hot, they start expanding and breaking apart. Whereas when they're in cold water, they seem to stay denser um, and much tighter. And that makes a big difference from staying on the hook. Uh, also, don't be frightened to pump some more on the bank or soak some more on the bank that can work um, fresh batch especially when it's really hot don't be frightened to redo your pellets because uh, the fresher they are the better by that i mean they've not allowed been allowed to get warm yet so that's a big tip with the old expanders come on chats where are you uh, get on to mick and new fish to do a eva double stacked pellet case with tubs brilliant for what you're saying yeah, it's one of them though, isn't it? Uh, as much as I'd love a little bag to put all these tubs in, them tubs are a couple of quid off Amazon for like eight of them. Um, and they sit in a bait box, which costs a couple of quid. So that whole thing costs about a fiver. If we were to bring out an EVA bag with all tubs in, it'd be like 25 quid. And at Newfish, we're not really about that. We're, we're trying to create a brand where we're not them guys. We're not, we're not trying to rip anyone off or anything. I don't know what that is. Sounds like a donkey. But, um, you know, we want to create something good. And for me, that's just as good as a bag. <laughs> and it's cost me a bait box and a pack of tubs. So by all means, go and buy an EVA tub full of uh, little screw top pots. But I didn't send you. Uh, do you use tap water to prepare expanders or bottle? I'll get your questions in, everyone, by the way, because I've got a couple more minutes and then I'm going to uh, crack on with some editing. Um, going to Tamar actually in two days time for the feeder masters. Can't wait for that. Um, obviously press innovation sponsor the event. So they'll be doing all the live coverage and stuff, but I'll be taking a few pictures and, uh, making a nuisance of myself to the anglers as well. Uh, do, right. Anyway, back to Chris's question, Chris Walker, do you use tap water to prepare your expanders or bottled water? I'm happy to use tap water. Um, I've caught loads of fish on expanders over the years. Um, do I think it makes a difference? I don't know, really. If it gives you confidence, use bottled water, but I've got no problems using tap water. And it's the same with ground bait. I mix, I always mix my ground bait at home. Um, got like a tap at, out the front and I just do it before I get on the bank. I just, I don't know, I've got loads of confidence in using <laughs> tap water, so I don't see the point in changing really. Um, but if it, by all means, if you think it's going to make a difference to your fishing and use the, uh, use bottled water or even like collect it in your garden or whatever in a water butt or something. I know Lee Kerry, I'm pretty sure Lee used to have like a bucket that he used to scoop out from. He was confident in rainwater, but I'm confident in tap water. I drink loads of it, so it can't be that bad. Uh, so that's it. Uh, there's no more questions popping in. So if you, like I said, two more minutes and then I'll be gone. Just a quick recap on what we've been talking about. Oh, Jesus. I just had a thought about Man United as well when I see these tubs. How bad are Man United at the minute, by the way? I've almost been in the mug off, but I'm the only mug at the minute when it comes to Man United. So get your hard pellets, give them a bit of oil. That was num tip number one. Have a rolling stash. If you can use your own pellets, get yourself a bucket like this with a nice clip sort of top lid on. Have a rolling stash. Keep drizzling the oil on there. Keep shaking it around and take out what you need for the session. Great tip that is. Uh, like I say, I take them both on a match with me at Barbie Banks because I'm allowed to use my own pellets. I won't use them all, but I've got them. 
and I just have them next, behind the box and I'll take a pint out at a time. With I always put a pint tub in each one, scoop out a pint at a time. Um, the next tip was having different coloured hard pellets, so red ones, the pale ones. i tell you what was a really good colour back in the day, white, but you can't get a good white pellet any, anywhere. So if anyone knows of any good white pellets, let me know in the comments because Yorkshire Bait Company used to do them and they were brilliant. Um, but they just, I think that company went, either went bust or just not around anymore, so that's a shame. Um, the white ones were fantastic, so uh, just try different colours. Yellow can be good, red can be good. I reckon green would be really good as well. Green's a really strong silhouette in the water, uh, hence why green ground bait's so effective. So yeah, just get yourself some little tubs and get some different bait, cut bait dyes and give it a go. Um, as you can see there as well, just off topic a little bit, I always... They're like coppins. I've got <clears throat> some coppin hook pellets that I use. They're just straight out of the bag, but I always douse them in oil. You can see the oil in the pot. Almost like over-soaked in oil. I like them. Good them. Little drizzle of oil. Uh, salt as well, won't go amiss. I can't wait for chub season just around the corner. I've been looking at my chub bait this morning. And then finally, get on the expanders down the edge. Two six mils, two eight mils would be good as well, I'm sure. And if you're fishing for smaller carp, try two four mils. They can be that can be really good. Get them in the fridge. Bit of red dye in there. Again, could be green, could be yellow, whatever. Um, and that's it for the old uh, free pellet tip. Oh, free pellet tips because um, I'm going fishing tomorrow. I can't wait. Like I say we're going Tamar. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, everyone, because the numbers are going up really nicely. But there's only about thirty percent of you who watch my videos are subscribed, which is the travesty in it get subscribing get liking spread the word we're trying to do things differently both here and on new fish we're, we're getting some really nice comments on new fish because obviously it's a brand led page that is um but loads of people are realizing that we're not all about the hard sell a lot of the videos you see on youtube are the hard sell aren't they let's be honest whereas we're trying not to do that we're trying to not be those guys we're trying to give you different content enjoyable content that isn't the hard sell. So if you like that, like the sound of that, new fish YouTube channel. Okay, I've got red on my finger. New fish YouTube channel. Subscribe. Give us a like as well, because that's growing fast and I'm really working hard on that. This channel is going from strength to strength. So thank you everyone. Thanks for the support. It really means a lot when you're all commenting and stuff. So give those tips a try. Let me know how you get on with them as well. And uh, we'll see you soon. And if you want more live content like this, let me know because it's dead easy for me to do. Um, set it up on a tripod. It might be something I do weekly now, from now on, as long as I've got time. So uh, thanks everyone, and we'll see you again soon.